Hello everyone and a very warm welcome. This is Rachel live from Calkine Studios in Sydney and you're watching The Early Trades. The subsizing inflation expectations in the market psychology is carving out a somewhat positive scenario. At the same time, market players remain jittery amid volatile cryptocurrencies, sinusoidal com commodity trends and growing virus concerns in Melbourne. On that note, let us cast an eye over market charter and how it's panning out today. The ASX 200 wobbled during the early trade hours despite all three broader U.S. market indices ending in the green. Notably, the U.S. investors resume their bets on economy-linked stocks after inflation worries began to fade. Energy and material sectors are pulling up the ASX cords, while IT, healthcare and financials are capping the gains. Australian energy producers such as Boss Energy, Carnarvon Petroleum, Sandars and Woodside Petroleum are trading with a positive bias today amid oil price uptick. On Wednesday, crude oil prices traded slightly higher as a drop in US crude stockpiles reinforced expectations of improving fuel demand ahead of the peak summer driving season. That offset worries that a possible return of Iran could create an excess supply. The development in the U.S. around nuclear deal is under discussion for revival, which could allow Iran to flow an additional 1,000 barrels per day to 2,000 barrels per day into the market, waiving U.S. sanctions on Iran. OK, now let's move on to the miners' space. The heavyweight Australian miners Rio Tinto, Fortescue Metals and BHP are trading in positive territory, despite some selling pressure witnessed in iron ore space. On Wednesday, Chinese steel and iron ore prices tumbled after the Shanghai Futures Exchange vowed to look into abnormal transactions, further strengthening the government's ongoing quest to temper commodity inflation. On the Dalian Commodity Exchange, iron ore made a low of 992 yuan per tonne and closed the session down by a decent 6.1% to 994.5 yuan a tonne. On the other hand, Australian gold miners such as Newcrest Mining, Gold Resources and Remelius Resources also degray mining are trading lower. That's amid softening gold prices. Gold fell below an important level of 1,900 US dollars an ounce on Wednesday as a recovery in the dollar and US Treasury yields dimmed its appeal. However, continued expectations of a dovish stance from the US Fed capped its losses. Let us now zoom our lens on the major stock movers of today's trading session. Champion Iron is the leading gainer on the ASX 200 so far today. The company reported record financial results for its fourth quarter and 2021 fiscal year results. The company has noted financial year 2021 earnings per share of 97 cents, an EBITDA of $819.5 million and a net cash flow from operations of $624 million. As indicated by the company, the construction work is progressing as planned, with more than 200 individuals actively working on the Phase 2 project. This is expected to be completed by mid-2022. Notably, Champion is building on the market's robust appeal for our high-grade iron ore concentrate with our growth projects. It's time for a very short break now. Stay tuned as I have a special report on an Australian electric vehicle charger developer called Tritium and was COVID-19 virus leaked from Wuhan? At Calkine TV, we'll take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility, as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. Whether space travel will gain momentum, while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts, our experts will share their timely inputs. So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Calkine TV. Hello, welcome back. This is Rachel live from Calkine Studios and you're watching The Early Trades. Wealth manager AMP is witnessing gains while the Australian Securities and Investments Commission is suing the company for allegedly charging deceased customers. 
On Thursday, Essex says that it had started civil proceedings in the federal court against five companies related to wealth manager AMP for allegedly involving in charging life insurance premiums and advice fees to customers despite being notified of their deaths. According to ASIG, AMP companies received over $100,000 in advice fees and $500,000 in insurance premiums from accounts of deceased customers. The Australian watchdog alleges that the five firms charged fees from the families of over 2,000 of its deceased customers between May 2015 and August. Moving on now, the Costa Group and Fisher & Paykel are trending lower. The Costa Group says its first half performance is expected to be marginally ahead of the previous comparable period in calendar year 2020. That's with strong international operations offset by challenges in domestic produce conditions. Across the domestic produce categories, the company has seen mixed performances in the current year to date. Meanwhile, Fisher & Paykel Healthcare Corp today announced its results for the full year, ending 31st of March, showing operating revenue soared by 56%, while net profit after tax jumped up by 82% over the previous financial year. The company's directors have approved a final dividend of 22 cents per share. That's an increase of 42% on the final dividend from last year. The dividend will be paid on the 7th of July. Meanwhile, Lay by Group announced its full year financial year 2021 results today on the ASX. The leading buy now pay later provider delivered record results with a full year ending 31st of March. The company recorded gross merchandise value up 159% year on year, while group income inched up 138% year on year. The group recorded rapid growth numbers from the British market. Now let's take a look at this Australian electric vehicle charger developer, Tritium, making its debut on the NASDAQ via a SPAC route. And the developer and manufacturer of direct current fast chargers for electric vehicles. Brisbane-based Tritium has entered into a definitive agreement with a special purpose acquisition company, Decarbonisation Plus Acquisition Corporation 2. The company disclosed that with the deal, Tritium would be publicly listed on the NASDAQ. On completion of the transaction, the merger would be known as Tritium and would trade under the ticker DCFC on the NASDAQ. Tritium was founded back in 2001 and has witnessed significant revenue growth in the last five years. Tritium is valued at around 1.2 billion US dollars. The Australian company disclosed that the transaction is expected to generate gross proceeds of almost 403 million US dollars of cash, with the assumption of minimal redemptions by the public stockholders of DCRN. Additionally, the proceeds would be used to fully fund the growth of Tritium as a technology industry leader in the direct current fast charging space for electric vehicles. The pre-money enterprise worth of the combined group is 1.4 billion US dollars at a per share price of 10 US dollars. The company is confident that the transaction would offer substantial capital to develop Tritium's operations to three international manufacturing facilities. With this deal, DCRN and Tritium will work in fastening the efficient electrification of global transport. Well, it's time for a very short break now. Stay tuned as I have a special report on the COVID-19 virus potentially being leaked from a Wuhan lab. This is Rachel live from Kalkine Studio and you're watching The Early Trades. At Kalkine TV, we'll take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility, as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. Whether space travel will gain momentum, while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts, our experts will share their timely inputs. So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Calkine TV.
Welcome back. You're watching Calkine TV. This is Rachel live from Calkine Studios and you're watching The Alley Trades. Now let's look into this breaking news. Was COVID-19 leaked from a Wuhan lab? Well, US President Joe Biden has upped the ante on investigations into the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic, ordering the US intelligence officials to conduct a detailed probe and report back in 90 days. The earlier investigation has zeroed in on two plausible scenarios for the origins of the pandemic, human contact or laboratory accident. The report is to be submitted within three months as from now. As of date, among the US intelligence community, two elements think that the virus has spread through human contact, while one element thinks that it's spread through a lab leakage. All three have low or moderate confidence in their assumptions. The US president has also said that he would press for a fair international investigation of the COVID-19 pandemic in China, a country that has been showing tremendous friction to foreigners. Since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic in December 2019 in China's Wuhan province, the world has seen 169 million cases and 3.5 million people have died due to the contagious virus. While the virus might have ripped through the countries across the world, China, its place of origin, has reported a minuscule 91,019 cases only. Okay, that's all for now. Stay tuned with Calkine TV for more live market updates. We'll be back with more news on the markets, economy, diverse themes and sectors. I'm Rachel signing off for now.